Uh, we're going to be making something uh, a bit more modern, not your traditional uh, apple pie, cherry pie. Um, I, I picked some flavors that I know no one's really used to trying. Uh, it's not very common, but combined with other flavors are very good. So we have a, a yuzu white chocolate lime mango coconut concoction. It, it's really good together. I made some small bite size. Uh, bite sizes for you to try. Um, I'm going to kind of go step by step on the process of making the pie. Um, I'm going to fly through it. So if you have any questions, I have some, um, some recipe booklets. If there's not enough, you can always email me. Um, I can send you a lot of uh, pictures, recipes, whatever you'd like. Um, so whenever I make a pie, I make my dough first. A lot of times, I, I buy the dough. So store-bought pie crust work. Um, for this instance, I'm going to use uh, my favorite pie dough recipe is actually Martha Stewart. So um, we're going to start with this. Uh, I have these little rings. You can find them at any baker's store. Uh, Michael's has them. I just grease them heavily with some butter. I'm going to uh, just press my pie dough in, which I'm sure you guys do all the time. Um, I guess the only tip and trick would be just to make sure it gets in the little crevice. And like I said, if you don't have your, uh, if you don't make dough from scratch, you can always go ahead and just buy some, cut it out with a ring cutter. That works too. Uh, I have a little trick. So if your pie dough looks like this, if you want a nice crisp, clean edge, after it bakes, we'll go ahead and clean it up. So that's not a that's not a problem. I have some beans here for that when we bake it in the oven, it bakes really nice and evenly. Uh, a lot of people par bake it with the beans, but I go ahead and I bake it the whole way with the beans, just because I like a crispier, flakier dough. Uh, not so much, I don't know, I don't really like the cakey texture of pie dough, so I always try to uh, bake it the whole way longer, slower, crispy. That way you get the textural difference when you have a pie. Um, so I'll just show you one more. A lot of times I like to uh, sprinkle the sugar in the raw on my pie dough. I think it, it helps with the, the crustiness of it as well. It's very good. You can even sub it for, if you're making a, a pie dough from scratch, you can sub the regular granulated sugar for some sugar in the raw and it, I mean, it just sets your pie crust off. So that's the, I always try to get that done first. And then I go ahead and I freeze this before I bake it off just so that it's really nice and clean. Just a regular plastic wrap. You don't bake that. I do, yeah. No, mm -hmm. Yeah. And it makes it really easy to just pick it up when you're done and throw it back together. Doesn't melt, nothing. I've never, and I've never tasted any plastic, nothing like that. You can put the beans straight in there. You can um, you can put foil. What do you use? Yeah. Aluminum foil. Um, so when I made this pie, I went inside out. So I started with the component that was in the in the dead center, and then I worked my way out. Uh, the first thing that I made was a yuzu jelly. So a yuzu is a Chinese bitter, very similar to a lime, mixed between a lime and an orange. Uh, it has a very uh, acquired taste, but if you add sugar, if you uh, add other things, I, I personally like it. Um, it's very easy. It's only uh, four ingredients. Just the yuzu juice. You can use uh, lime juice, use lemon juice, orange juice, anything. All the recipes that I have, you can kind of manipulate and change into uh, different fruit purees, uh, anything you like, really. So I have some yuzu juice. I have some sugar. And you're just going to bring it to a boil. Very light simmer. Just to dissolve the sugars. That's all you want to do. While that's going, we have uh, gelatin. I use the gelatin leaves. I like the, 
I don't know, I think it's more handy. It's easier than the, uh, the dry active gelatin. So you just get the, the dry gelatin leaves and you're gonna wanna bloom them. So if you don't bloom them, they're not gonna activate and they're not gonna set up and gelatinize. What you wanna do is you always wanna use ice cold water. Uh, whatever your recipe calls for, you're gonna times that by five just to make sure that uh, it gets soaked up really nicely and activates all the way. Uh, if you use hot water, it kills your gelatin. Uh, so you always want to make sure you use ice, ice water. A lot of people just turn on the tap and use the cold water that comes out, but I don't know, I've found that when I've been playing with recipes, when I do that, some of them aren't consistent, so I always use ice cold water. Um, it's going to look something like this. Uh, and then just, just squeeze all of the water out. Um, so let's see how this is doing. It's almost there. So once that comes to a simmer, we're going to add the gelatin in, and we're going to pull it off of the heat because you... That's the gelatin. So um, we're going to pull it off of the heat because if you melt it too much, if it's too high of a temperature, it's also going to kill the gelatin. So you always want to be very careful when you're working with stuff like this. It's very easy to, um, to mess up, unfortunately. That's pretty good. Yes. You can use anything you have. It'll be fine. Just make sure you pull it off. Um, and then the next thing that I did was, well, I don't want to put that down yet. I just poured it into these, uh, these flex molds. They're really, really handy. They're a bit pricey, but if you just buy one mat, I, you can do endless things with it. Uh, you can freeze. A lot of them you can bake in as well, so you can get a cool shape. Um, for this case, I just poured it in the molds, popped it in the freezer, and the next day I came back. I'm sure you could go back in like two to four hours. I popped it out, and it's a really cool gelatinized little piece of jello. So I'll let someone try if anyone wants to try it. Anyone want to try? Thank you. Of course. It's kind of similar to, uh, to lemonade, limeade. <laughs> so, um, so after that, the, uh, the next layer is a white chocolate and lime mousse. Uh, I love white chocolate. I never tried it with lime, but the first time that I did, I loved it, so now I use it for everything. Uh, it's very easy. I'll show you. You can do it at home. Um, this is a more complicated recipe. What you could do is you could just melt some white chocolate, fold some whipped cream in, and fold some lime zest in. That works too, but I love gelatin. It's my trusty little friend, so I use it for everything. Okay, for this guy, it's going to be white chocolate mixed with a little bit of uh, the yuzu again, just to bring it all together. So I have some milk. Uh, what else do I have? I have some sugar. And then I also have some of the yuzu juice as well. Like I said, you can use, um, use anything that you like. The only thing you want to be careful of when you're working with milk and uh, acidic fruits is it turning into buttermilk, so you don't want that to happen, so you just mix it right before you're about to use it, because if you let it sit, it's going to turn into a very curdy texture. So I just uh, bring that to a boil. And while that's going, I'll get everything else. Any questions so far? Uh, Y-U-Z-U. You can find it, um, Fresh Market has it, Whole Foods has it. Uh, I'm sure Publix has it somewhere. Okay, so what you want to do is let this come to a, a simmer, and then we're going to temper in our, our eggs. Uh, the reason we temper is to avoid the eggs from cooking too fast and uh, turning into scrambled eggs, essentially. Um, so we're going to pour in a, a very little bit at a time and then put it back into the pot and cook it just until the eggs have coagulated a little bit so they set up. It's almost there. So once that boils, 
you can use a ladle, you can uh, use a friend. And you're just gonna pour it into your eggs very, very slowly, about a third of the mixture, just to warm up the eggs a little bit. Whisk it really well. And then we're gonna pour it back into the pot. Whisk it again. And that's when you wanna put your, your, uh, your heat to very, very low heat. I'm just gonna cook it until it thickens a little. I normally switch to a, a rubber heat resistant spatula just because we don't wanna make the mixture too airy. I have some white chocolate here. You can melt it before or you can melt it after. Thank you. Oh, that one's louder. Thank you. This thing is funny. Okay, so once it's warm, we're gonna pour it over the white chocolate. It's gonna help to melt whatever's not melted already, and then it also uh, just emulsifies the whole mixture together. some uh, cream that I whipped with uh, no sugar, just plain heavy cream whipped up. Put that in a um, While this mixture is still hot, I'm gonna go ahead and add the, the gelatin that I bloomed in the water and I squeezed out. I'm gonna add it while it's still warm so that it melts it for us without uh, overheating it. You don't wanna add it right away. If you do, it's just a disaster really. Just whisk it really well, make sure it all dissolves. And then the last thing we're gonna do is fold this mixture into the whipped cream. So I know it seems like a lot of steps, but it's really rewarding. Um, the taste is phenomenal. Can't really beat it. I'm just gonna fold it in really well. This bowl is probably a little too small. Looks very uh, soupy right now, but once it uh, goes in the freezer and firms up, it's gonna be a really nice airy white chocolate and lime mousse. <clears throat> and I have my lime zest in the uh, in the whipping cream. Okay, then I just went ahead and I used a piping bag. You can use a Ziploc bag, whatever you have around the house, and I piped it in the, the silicon mold. And the same way that I uh, froze the yuzu jelly, I just uh, piped it in there. I popped one out, and I stuck it in after I piped it in the silicone mold so that it would be in the dead center. Um, and then I piped some more on top so it would kind of hide it. So when you break it in, you have a really nice layer. You'll see the yuzu jelly and then the, um, the white chocolate. It's really fun. Okay, while that's freezing, um, I went ahead and I made a citrus and coconut crumble. It's really, really easy. Uh, it's probably everything that you have lying around in your pantry. And if you have a food processor, um, you just put everything in there and combine it. So I have butter, 
brown sugar, cake flour, almond flour, shredded coconut, and then some lime zest. You can add anything. You can put pistachios in here. Um, I've done it before with hazelnuts. You just grind up the hazelnuts. Um, it's very fun. So I just have everything in here. I'm just going to pulse it. Until it turns into a streusel. can't really beat that. And it turns into this really nice uh, crumbly texture. Sometimes we use it um, on top of cakes. Um, like I said, you can make this plain. You can make it with coconut. You can make it with anything. Um, I just take it out of the food processor and I put it on a sheet pan with some parchment paper. And the same thing goes for this. I normally freeze this uh, beforehand before I go ahead and uh, bake it off. Take it off at 325. You can, you can, you know, do so much with this stuff. You can fold it into a buttercream. You can do anything really. And then once it's baked, it comes out really nice and golden brown. Uh, very zesty. It's really good. I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, okay, so in my pie dough, you can't really see it. You'll get a taste of it later. I don't know if you want to pass these around too while you're there. Here, I'll bring it around for you. I'm not sure. <laughs> Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. It's about thirty pieces. Yeah. So if you guys want to try anything, it's just a little, little bit of the components. If you guys want to just pass them around, you can. Just so you can get the bite in, so it doesn't, you know, it all makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it's right here. And this is all of the recipes here. Of course, thanks. Um, so I'm going to make a coconut de croix. What that is, it's a, a very fancy French word for cake. It's a very aerated cake. It's almost like a meringue with flour. Uh, it's also super easy to do at home. It's going to change your life. It changed mine. Um, so I have some egg whites in here, and I'm going to uh, whip them up until they're medium peaks. let those go for a while. You want to make sure you whip them until they're pretty whipped because we're going to add sugar into it. If we add the sugar in before um, they've whipped up too much, it's just going to deflate the whole mix. So we want to uh, just make sure that it's really nice and whipped. Like I said, this is easy. You can uh, whip this up in 10 minutes at home. I have some uh, some powdered sugar, some almond flour, which you can just take some almonds and uh, just grind them up in the fruit processor. I have some coconut. I'm just going to combine all of that together. So all we're going to do is fold one into the other, the, uh, the eggs into the dry. Okay, so I'll give you guys, I'll show you how this looks. frothy. It's not too whipped, but it's, uh, it's good enough to start adding the sugar. Okay, so I sprinkle in a little bit at a time. Uh, if you add too much, it flops. If you, um, it's very temperamental, so just a little bit. crank it up some more. Okay, it's 
And once that's incorporated, I'm just gonna. That's fine. As you can see, it's pretty, oh, I don't want to try putting it over my head, but it's, uh, it's pretty whipped. And then I have all of my dry mixed together, so it's the, um, the almond flour, the coconut, and the powdered sugar. Uh, we're just going to dump it all in there and uh, whisk it all together. Very easy. You can do it without the coconut. A lot of times we, um, we do it with uh, pistachios really good. I mean, if you add some green food coloring, it makes a, a really nice surprise, nice cake. Um, so that's how it looks. And that's going to be uh, in the base of our pie. Uh, what you can do is just uh, spread it on a, a sheet pan. Make sure your sheet pan is lined with uh, a parchment paper or wax paper. Uh, silicone mat. It's actually the best tasting thing ever and it's so, so simple and so versatile. You can do anything with it really. You can even sprinkle some more, uh, some more coconut on top. I just spread it and then I bake it at uh, 325 for about 10 minutes and it's going to get really nice and golden brown. It's going to look like this after. Just a very thin piece of cake. Obviously if you want it thicker you can go thicker. It'll just take a little bit longer to bake. And then the last thing is, uh, and I really like this recipe. Uh, it was the first time I tried it when I was trying this out. It's a mango yuzu and spiced mousse. Um, I never thought really to put spices with mango because I don't really like mango to begin with. I don't really like, uh, you know, cinnamon too much. But together it's really good. Um, and I think it goes well with the yuzu. It kind of sets the yuzu off. Uh, this one is a bit uh, tricky, this recipe. So I have some mango puree. You can find this at uh, any food store. You can puree fresh mangoes if you like, but um, I don't think anyone wants to do that. This is the yuzu juice again. It comes in a really beautiful bottle. If you ever see it, you probably would never notice it, but um, it's, it's a beautiful bottle. It's almost like a wine bottle. Um, so I mix the mango and the yuzu, and then like before, we're gonna bring it to a boil. Simmer it a little bit. I'm going to add the sugar in so it dissolves the sugar. This one's actually cool. This one has gelatin and it also has cornstarch. So the, the cornstarch just reinforces it uh, standing upright, especially when we're using stuff like the dome silicone molds. Um, and when we have so much weight inside of the mousse as well, it helps a lot. So we're just going to bring that to a simmer and then we're going to do the whole tempering thing again where we're going to temper um, the hot mixture into our cold eggs. A lot of people use uh, room temperature eggs when tempering. I don't. I use cold. I, it just helps me a lot. It's less stress. Um, I just find it's easier. So just let that go for a minute. So yeah, all we're doing is we're just making and freezing, making and freezing, and sticking and making and freezing. And um, it, it seems like a lot, but I, I think it's uh, something really cool. You know, if you have a special occasion, if you have uh, special friends in town, just do something a little different. It's almost there. Let's 
give it a whisk so the sugars don't burn or anything like that. Caramelize. Please. So that's pretty warm. So I'm going to pour. I should have brought a ladle, um, but I'm just going to pour a little of it in at a time. And then at low heat, just pour it back in there. And this is where we're going to add the cornstarch. I don't, I didn't make a slurry last time. I know a lot of people make a slurry with the cornstarch when they're working with it to prevent the lumps. But I found that just whisking this with so much liquid, it was, it was fine. There was no need to make a slurry. Just kind of dumped everything in there and just whisked away. We're going to cook this until it, it turns into a, a thicker pudding mixture. Um, just to make sure that when we pipe it in there, everything sets up. Once it gets there, we'll add our gelatin and fold in the, uh, the whipped cream again. So once you, once you do this a few times, you kind of notice that it's the same steps, just repeating themselves with every recipe. And just whisk it. Make sure you stir it while it's cooking so your eggs don't scramble. I'm sure you could just Google it, you know, just how many um, <laughs> cups are in 100 grams of water. So it's good to have a scale on hand, though, because a lot of the, uh, the newer cookbooks, a lot of stuff like that, they're coming out with grammage. Went to a French pastry school, so we did everything in the gram. <laughs> it's funny, when people see me using cup measurements, they... Uh, they look at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> so I learned this way. Okay, so once it gets a little thicker, I'm gonna go ahead, pull it off the heat. And then I'm gonna add my gelatin that's soaked and drained. Just whisk it together so it dissolves. And then I have some whipped cream again, and I have some spices. You can use, um, you can use a cinnamon stick, or in this case, I'm going to use some ground cinnamon since it's easier, more convenient. Just dump it in there. A lot of people use the, uh, the whole spices, and they uh, bring their, their liquid to a boil and let it infuse for a few minutes. But I think it's a lot easier if you have some ground spices on hand, and you just dump it in there. You don't have to infuse anything and you keep the flavor. It doesn't change the texture. So I have some cream again that I had whipped. I'm just going to fold it in there. Generally speaking, you want to wait until this cools before you fold it in. But since we're pressed for time, I'll fold it in right now. It's a beautiful color too. I mean, if you want to make this, oops, just this alone and pour it in a pie shell, I'm sure it would be phenomenal. Very tasty. Okay, once again, it looks soupy. That's okay because we're gonna freeze it. Um, so what this is, this is the white chocolate mousse that I made two recipes ago with the yuzu jelly inside. So once that freezes, we pop it out. And we have these ready to go. Some little. Uh, half spherish things. And with this mousse, we can go ahead and just put it in a piping bag, a Ziploc bag, whatever we have on hand. You can even use an ice cream scoop. An ice cream scoop is a good trick for anyone at home that doesn't have a piping bag on hand for cupcakes, whatever it might be. Um, but we're going to go ahead and pipe these in here. Once they set up, about five minutes. You don't need to wait very long. I just pop one of these guys in. Um, and then I fill it all to the brim, right to the top, freeze it, and then 
for the grand finale. I think I have one. They're a little soft. They've been sitting out, but you have a beautiful dome, and inside you have your white chocolate mousse, and you have your yuzu jelly. Uh, so right here, I just have a glazing rack. I don't want to move this pot. It's still a little warm. And I have some uh, yellow glaze. And if anyone wants this recipe, it's the coolest thing ever. You can put it on birthday cakes. You can put it on anything. Uh, let me just melt it a little bit. It's very easy. It's just sweetened condensed milk, water, sugar, and gelatin. And some, uh, did I say chocolate? It has chocolate in it as well. It's very, very cool. You can color it with any color you have on hand, gel colors. Uh, for Valentine's Day, we made a red glaze, and we glazed a little chocolate ball, and we made it into a cherry. It was so cute. So any color works. Melt it in a microwave. You can melt it over um, a double broiler, whatever you have. I kind of melted it beforehand, so it shouldn't need that long. Just a few more seconds. And then make sure this is frozen. This one's not, but make sure it's frozen. And it's beautiful. You can coat it once or you can coat it twice if you want a really, really uh, shiny color. For that one, I coated it twice. Just pop it in the freezer for five minutes or so. So assembling the whole thing, we have our pie dough, we have our coconut. What I went and did was I just put some, uh, I don't have, I didn't know we didn't have an oven, but I just put the, uh, the coconut sponge on the bottom. And then I took my dome. This one is very soft. I just stuck it in there. <laughs> and our crumble. Where is that guy? And some crumble. You just put it on the side. So the crumble helps to, you know, have another really crispy texture. I like that since everything else is pretty soft. Kind of put it in there. And voila, we have our yuzu white chocolate lime and mango and coconut and everything concoction that you can possibly think of. I will, um, I'll cut this one open so you guys can kind of get the layers. Do we have a knife anywhere? No? Not a big one? Let's find out, use this one. I hope this one's pretty. There we go. Sorry, I messed it up a little bit there. But as you can see, you get the uh, you get the yellow, the white, the yuzu, the white, the yellow, the crust, the coconut, the everything, and it's a surprise inside. Any questions? I know it was a lot. <laughs> no? Oh, thank I've done, I've done it like 40 times. <laughs> Anybody? Anybody? Anything? Nothing? Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. I have a recipe book right here. Um, I only brought like uh, 15 copies. I think there's a few left. Yeah. Absolutely. You didn't get to try any? Oh. Yeah, absolutely. Let's break into this one, too. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can cut some more. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know it's a, it's a little uh, different, but I figured I'd, I'd try something that not a lot of people have tried. Oh.
Oh, last one. And if anyone else wants recipes, I can give you my email and I can go ahead and just email. It's a book, yeah. There's there's about six recipes in there. Okay. I guess everybody was. Okay. There's some plates over there too. I'll go grab those. <laughs> So it's either you love it or you hate it kind of thing. Oh, <laughs> just dig in. <laughs> Let me cut some more. I'll write my email down and you give me yours and we can exchange. You didn't get it? <laughs> oh my god, get out of here. There you go. Enjoy. This is just a uh, mint lavender. Make it really super fancy. I'm sorry. I don't want to, you know, stick my fingers all over. <laughs> really? <laughs> there you go. Yes. Are you the last one? There you go. You're the last one. <laughs> Enjoy. So yeah, it's, it's it's very different, but together, kind of think that it works. Selena, S-E-L-E-N-A, dot Delaney, D-E-L-A-N-E-Y, at Hyatt.com. So if anyone has any, A-N-E-Y, yes. So I'll go ahead and just email you the whole file and you can take whatever you, if you have any questions, if you think of anything, feel free. It was really nice to meet you all, and I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you have a really fun time here today. I hope I wasn't too boring. <laughs>